Welcome to Monkey's Paper Blues of Craft Corner. Today we are going to be going over something that a lot of people have requested. I'm going to show the recipe I have for my homemade glitter paste and some tips and techniques. So to begin with, you're basically going to need a few simple things. First thing is Liquitex Heavy Gloss Gel. You can get that at most of your craft stores. I will leave some links below. Some fine glitter. Some perfect pearls or in my case, I'm using Pearl X. Some reclosable containers and some disposable palette knives. This Liquitex gel is really awesome. It is white when you open it, but it does dry clear. And it has a very nice consistency. I have had seen some videos where people have used Mod Podge and other mediums, but I just don't feel like you get the creamy, kind of creamy texture you need for this. This has a very nice, fluffy, creamy medium. So I'm going to put, with my palette knife, some of this heavy gloss gel in this container. And I will say, the gloss, um, they do make a matte one of this. But I haven't tried it yet. I feel like it would make the glitter a little bit more, less shiny. Um, because it has that matte consistency. So I would say probably your best bet would be the gloss in this. Now you're going to spoon this in. Do not fill it to the top. Because you're going to have to leave yourself some stirring room. Because you're going to be mixing the glitter as well as the pigment powder in this container. So leaving a little space, a hole, is a good idea. Because if not, you're going to have it everywhere. And you will still probably get some everywhere, because I did when I was mixing it my first few batches. So you see that goes a long way. That's only an 8 ounce container of that. Now, I'm going to suggest popsicle sticks for this. I mean, you do have your palettes, your plastic palette knives, but with this glitter, it gets really messy, so it may get hard to get it off your palette knife, and you might end up contaminating your palette knives. So you're going to just put this whole packet of glitter. The more glitter, the better. So don't be afraid to add the whole packet. After all, this is glitter paste. And you're going to mix this around in this thing. See how I say you're going to need some mixing space? Because you're going to be mixing this around. And if it's full all the way, it's going to be hard to get a good mix. And you're going to go all the way around. I often, like these containers, I put it on the side and I see if there's any white on the sides. And I try to mix it in better because, you know, sometimes we mix Miss Beck's corners or, you know, the sides of a container when we mix. So now that that's in there. I'm going to take the other side of my popsicle stick and I'm going to add some of these Pearl X powders. And I got this beautiful brown color that will go great with this brown glitter. It's almost bronze, it's kind of nice. I'll put the name on the video for you so that way you know what color I did end up using. Now, Pearl X is going to make this really messy, and you're going to have some Pearl X explode at the sides, of course, because it's very light in consistency and fluffy, so of course when you mix it, it pops out. But it does make this medium very beautiful in color. Now, I'll explain to you why you need to add some sort of pigment powder in this in a minute. Um, there's an important reason because this medium is clear. So if you don't add color, it's going to be clear. So just think when you buy glitter nail polish, if you want a color with the glitter, they usually add some pigment to it. If they want it to be clear with just glitter, they don't. So just think of that on your paper, what's going to end up happening. And I'll show two examples to show you the difference you get with, with and without the pigment powder. Now, you can see how this consistency is getting real gorgeous. And look at that. I will say the Liquitex is 
a little pricier, but it does make this process a little better. The other recipe, like I said, was Mod Podge and some tacky glue and it was just so many ingredients and getting the right texture and the consistency was hard. This, it's a no-brainer. You just add that, add your pigment powder and your glitter and stir. Nothing easier than that. So I'm going to do this sped up this time just to show you the process one more time. But of course, we're going to do a sped up. And I'm going to do the mixing of this again. Get all that purple glitter in there. Now you can mix them together all at once too. I find sometimes this is a little hard to see if you've gotten all the glitter in there and then later on to see if you get all the pearl, pigment pearl powder. I find doing it separate sometimes works better, but you can do it together if you want to. Like I said, we're gonna add that in there and we'll try to match the glitters as close as we can. Now if you don't have Pearl X, perfect pearls work good. Or even if you have some old eyeshadows that you want to crush up, go ahead, use it. Anything that gives it a pigmented base. But I've used the Pearl X. That's just my choice and what I had in stock. And it's like I said, sometimes this gets messy. And you've just seen a Pearl X explosion as I was doing it. So don't do this in a place that you don't, aren't prepared to have some mess because it will get messy. I'm, of course, using my glass mat. So the cleanup will be real easy. And look at you get messy. Now here's the difference. Now the one on the left, you see you've got that beautiful gold shine as well as the glitter. And it fills in the thing. This is the one with just the glitter in the medium. You see how it's clear? Now either one is fine. It depends on what you want. I mean, you still get that glittery shine with the one without the powder, but you don't get the filled in areas. So if you want that, you put that Pearl X powder in and you get that. So Pearl X and Liquitex equals that thick colored consistency. Whereas if you don't and you just add the glitter, you're going to get this. Now, this, like I said, this isn't totally bad either. I mean, some people like to add some watercolor background to that, and they just want something glittery, faint on top of it. You can use it that way. Mix both. Have some that are pigmented. Have some that are not. It's your choice. So let's go through some examples. The first thing I'm going to show you is I have this Waverly stencil, and I'm going to put this on some Canson 90-pound watercolor paper. And I'm going to show you a little trick. Now, if you have a piece a panel you don't want to have tape marks on, put your tape behind it and then tape your stencil on there. Because sometimes when you tape it ahead of time, you'll get corners that get missed. And that doesn't always work well for your design, especially if you want the whole panel filled. So I've learned just double up some tape on the background and do it. This also works good if you're doing ink blending too. That way you can get your whole panel covered. So I am going to add some of that beautiful purple glitter paste we made. Don't mind my dog in the background. Apparently she's chasing the cat again. And we're going to spread this on like we're spreading butter on toast. So sometimes you'll get some spots that kind of lose their luster. So you just go over it again and make it a little thicker in those areas. Like some of these open spots that are bigger, it's harder for the paste to just sit in there, so you end up having losing some. But you can always fill it in later. And you don't have to use a lot. A lot, little goes a long way with glitter paste. So don't be afraid that you're not using enough or whatever. Just... A little goes a long way. You don't need to just cover it completely with it. The thicker the glitter paste, the longer it's going to take to dry. So my rule of thumb is just enough that it colors the paper. And I'm just going to go over these bigger spots again with a little bit more thicker glitter paste. And there you go. And then wash your stencil right away. Don't let that sit on there because it will glue on there. And there's that one. 
Now, for this one, I'm going to show you in a beautiful green one that I made. But I'm going to show you, you don't have to do the whole panel. We're going to leave some of this kind of artsy, kind of half done, kind of almost vintagey, rustic look. I'm not going to make it clean. I'm just going to leave it like that. I don't care if there's half circles. I don't care if there's quarter circles. Just go crazy. Now for this one, I'm going to try using three different colors. Now, no one says you have to use one color only on your stencils. Go, go crazy. Do whatever you want. Just to make sure you don't have cross-contamination, be prepared to throw some away. Because you're going to have to wipe off your palette knife and not contaminate it. And I just got said before, make sure you get all those big sections. So next color, I have this beautiful lilac that I made. This is a little different than the other purple I made. The other one was a darker purple. This is a lighter lilac. Glitter paste can be really fun to use. You can do different colors, different textures. It's a great way to get more use out of your stencils. Like I said, you can do it on a plain background. I do suggest it on thicker paper, like a cardstock, a thicker cardstock, or watercolor paper because the mixture is wet. So it's going to warp your paper a little bit. And sometimes the thicker papers do handle it better. So usually this is watercolor paper, so 90 pound is pretty heavy. But you can use some of the thicker cardstocks also and get the same result. And I just blended that over. Now this one we're going to have a lot of fun with, and I'm going to tell you why. Because I'm going to put every color I can think of on this panel. And I'm just going to dollop them on there. And don't take big dollops, take little dollops, don't, unless you really want a lot of that color on there. Because when we're done this process, you're going to have a lot of waste. So the least amount you put down, the better. Because you don't need a lot, like I said, a little goes a long way. So like I see, you see the pink, the red, white, silver, blue, some more purple. And this is on regular black heavyweight cardstock. Nothing fancy. I want to show you that you don't have to use white. You can use color stocks and actually get some really beautiful results. Because the pigments in your glitter paste are going to show. And now here comes fun. Just smush it all together. Don't worry about, oh no, it's going to make it muddy. It's not. It's going to come out gorgeous. Don't worry. And look at that. Isn't that pretty? We're going to let that dry. You can even do it in more controlled lines. So here I'm doing, starting with a green, and I'm going to almost variegate it. These stencils... The last couple few stencils are actually made by folk art. You don't have to buy extensive stencils. Go to your local craft store, find some nice stencils that are, let's just say, in like the painting stenciling section. Sponge painting stencils, they work. I would say something with a less pointier line, more rounded corners are better. These were simple shaped ones I got from folk art. And I got a pack, I think, of like, Ten of them, or eight of them, I can't remember. But they had these really fun geometric shapes. Now, I had changed my mind. I was just going to do green, blue, and red. But I decided to put some purple in there just so it blends that red in really good with that blue. And that kind of ombre affected it. Now I'm going to do the same thing just here with two colors. Like I said, there's no rule telling you how to mix your glitter paste. You can do it whatever way you want. It really makes it fun, and it makes it gives more dimension to your project. I mean, you don't have to just stick to one color over a panel. You don't have to fill the whole panel. Whatever you feel works for what you're doing, use it. There's no rules that we have to follow when we make our 
cards. There's no rules we have to make when we make our art. That's one thing that's good about art. Use your creativity. And here's a double almost ombre effect. Of course, the rule of thumb when you're mixing colors, just make sure you keep your palette knife clean so you don't contaminate your other glitter paste. Now this one, I'm going to do this beautiful white. I had mixed this with a pigment powder that was called Interface. And those Interface ones have like a sheen to them. They're almost iridescent. And so I put that in there with that. Now I'm going in here with some silver. And last, I'm going to add some lilac. And this is once again on black cardstock. I feel like sometimes the more metallic -y colors look gorgeous on black cardstock. But like I said, any color. You can put any color on there. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? All right, so let's get into making some of these cards. Now, I have pre-cut a lot of these things. Um and also pre-emboss some sentiments. These are from Conquered and Knives Mini Mandalas set. And I took my stitched heart dies and I cut out that panel we made with all the mixed colors. And I also cut out a bigger vellum heart in the same die set. So that the vellum is kind of a layer taking the black off the black. Now I'm going to pop this up with some scotch adhesive foam squares. My favorite things to use. And that makes a heart almost float. Now I'm just going to put this on a basic black card form. And that alone is just gorgeous. Now I decided to pop up the sentiments also on some vellum so that the black on black wasn't going too much. And it kind of separated the two black colors. So I'm going to fishtail these and cut them down. And I did the sentiments in the Recollections Gold. So let me just line these up on there. And I'm going to put this. And I chose thank you for everything you do from that. Conquered and Knives set. I'll put a link down below for you guys so you can check out that for them. It is a very beautiful set. I'll end up using a lot of this in these things plus some other cute little sets. And I'm going to put this right onto the card form. And I love how that heart just floats. And I'm also going to include some new sequins we just got on the shop. Right now I have them in gold. Aurora Borealis Red, as well as a Aurora Borealis Yellow. And they are called Sunflower Rhinestones. And they are beautiful. These are brand new on the shop. And like I said, we got them right now in three colors. I have three other colors coming in, including a green, a silver, and a black. So, and hopefully I'll be coming with some pink and blue also. But I thought these are very unique and different. And they do sparkle really pretty. Especially the Aurora Borealis ones. They really shimmer. And you'll see those later on in the video. And there they all show details so you can see that why they're called a sunflower because I got that little mini raised area as well as the one in the middle. And these are in four millimeter. Um, so they are a smaller sequin, which is sometimes better for when we're making cards because sometimes the bigger ones are just too bulky. And I'm just going crazy with a little bit of them because I just felt the card was a little off balance. All right, so now since we have a black card, the sentiment I'm going to put inside has to be on some white paper. And someone asks, is this just regular copy paper? Yes, it is. You can use any kind of lightweight paper. 
Um, I've seen people buy some pastel papers that are solids, and it looks really cute with that too. But anything that you can cut down that is lighter than the cardstock you're using is perfect. And something that's easy for people to write on. Because you know people are going to write something inside your card. And also from the same set, I chose Life is Better because of you. And I did show a glimpse of that in my pocket. I just revamped all my stamp storage and I bought Avery and Al pockets. I'll be doing a video on them, what I think about them, and how well they store the stamps. I was, was using CD cases for my stamps and they just were cracking every time I took a stamp off there. And I was like, this isn't working anymore. So I just changed it up. I'll show you my little labeling system I do. But let's look at this card. Look at how pretty that little glitter paste thing is. All right, so next card is that pretty one that I mixed the reds, purples, and pinks in. And I'm going to take a two-inch strip of vellum, and I'm going to just slide across like a sash. This is a great way to add some dimension to your card, as well as if you have any blunders to cover them up. And I'll sh show that later, how that worked for me there. And I'm going to pull out some craft foam back side of this card just to give my card the rays that it needs on top. This card I'm keeping very simple. Because, you know what? The glitter paste is the, sh is the star of this show, not anything else. So I am going to put inside, wishing you a happy birthday. And I'm going to do that in, I believe, blue, Tuxedo Black Ink. And in the background, you see that bag of those sunflower sequins. They are the Aurora Borealis ones in the red. They're very pretty, and I'm going to be adding those. Now, I printed some more sentiments from that mini mandalas kit from Concord and Ninth. And snow recollections embossing powder. And I had more sentiments I was going to add, but I kind of felt like it was too much. So I ex that thought process and just stuck with a simple happy birthday. Like I said, let's keep this card simple. Let the glitter and shine from the glitter paste be the stars of the show. Now I'm going to cut some scotch adhesive squares up and put them on the back of the center that I just kind of slash cut. And I'm going to line it up sort of in the middle of that vellum. And here's a closer look at those. Aren't those pretty? So now I'm coming in with my Ranger Multimedia mat and I'm going to put some glue dots all over this front of this panel. And I am going to add some of these sunflower rhinestones to this card. Aren't they pretty? They're just the perfect color for this card. And they almost look like little mandalas, which is kind of neat since the background is mandalas. So it kind of works out well. And I'm going to put links to all the stencils that I used as well as the products were, that were used so that you guys can go back and find them easily because they are really fun to use. Like I said, this stencil was actually from Folk Art. Now, here's that gold panel. And this one actually is with the Hero Art stencil that actually came with this December kit. And I had done it a little while ago and I had used it for my example. And I'm going to put another vellum sash, two inch vellum sash actually. And these are the little mandalas that come with the Conqueror Knife kit. Um, and they're stackable or you can do them by themselves. And you can layer them, you can make different mandalas with it. It's really fun. I'm going to add some that I'm going to stack together. Just to give some dimension to these little mandalas. And I did these in the Recollections Gold. And 
Aren't they nice? And I'm just trying to figure out what layout, layout I want with these. Because I also want to leave room for the sentiment. Which is also in the Reed Collections Gold. And I'm just going to put some foam squares behind them. And layer them up. That way there's some dimension to them. I thought the black and gold and the white and gold would be a really fun combo. And I'm going to actually put this on a black card form also. So some of these I'm tucking underneath the vellum just to give it some dimension. So this one I'm going to start by adhering on there with my scotch, not my scotch, my Elmer's tape runner. And I'm going to stick that one under there and do the same thing. I'm trying to figure out what layout I want. I'm still trying to figure it out. Because I want to fit three huge, almost mandalas. They almost look like flowers, too, on this card. And also leave room for the sentiment. This one I think I'm going to put on top. And now I'm going to hear this one. And then I was like... Oh, the small ones just don't work. And I wanted to leave room for the sentiment, so I was like, uh. So I'm going to slash cut that. And do the same thing with the second sentiment. And for that one, I chose Life is Better with Someone Like You. So obviously I figured I'll add the sentiment first, that way I can decide where I want to go. Oops, that one was a little crooked. And I was going to add them floating, but I decided maybe I'll just add them to the ones I already had. So I'm going to add one more layer on top of that center one, just to give it a little bit more added pop. There we go. And I'm going to... Stick a little bit of foam adhesive behind it, too, just to give it more pop-up. Alright, so since I have so much dimension on the front of the card, I am not going to add any craft foam behind it, because there's so much already that it may make it hard to fit an envelope. And in that case, sometimes adhering it directly onto a card form is the best choice. And I'm going to go get that card form. Let me add a little bit more adhesive. I decided to add more because this may be a little warped and heavy. Now I'm going to stick that on there. And to embellish this, I am going to actually take some more of those gold sunflower rhinestones and add them to this card. So I'm going to put them in the center of all the mandalas, as well as on the sash. They are the perfect color for this card. Oh my gosh, they fit perfectly. All right, so since we have a black card again, once again, a white panel is going to be necessary. And I chose just a plain thank you for the inside. And I'm doing that in my tuxedo black ink. This is also from that mini mandalas kit. I have to say with this kit, there were so many sentiments that you could mix and match. It was really nice. And the mandalas being stackable or even changing their variation by just changing the center was gorgeous. I love that one. It's so pretty and elegant. All right, so here's another mandala one. And as you see, I have a little goof up where my panel lifted a little bit. And the glitter paste got underneath the stencil. So we are going to cover this up with vellum. Like I said, vellum could be great for just adding dimension to your project, as well as a great way to cover up any goof ups you may have done. So in this case, it's covering up my goof up. 
as well as adding that little element of extra to it. And for this one, I chose just a note from me to you from Conquer and Knives Many Mandalas. You'll see this one used a lot. When I got this set, I was just, oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I just want to make a bunch of things. So I made a lot in advance. Now for this one, I was going to pop up the sentiment with squares. And then I realized I wanted the pop up to be behind the sentiment underneath the vellum. So I did pull apart what I had just glued down with the vellum. And I stuck it, pulled it up, stuck that popping little section there with these foam squares on there. And I stuck it back down. Because I didn't want it to be too much to mention. Now this one, since we are doing less to mention it, I did take out some craft foam. And the other reason I did the foam underneath the vellum was to stick down the vellum so it didn't pop. So now I'm going to adhere my panel to my black card form. And there we go. Now, I was going to put a sentiment inside it, and I decided not to, but I will put a white panel in there. But first, I am going to embellish these with my Aurora Borealis rhinestones. They're also on the shop. They're just the perfect color for this panel because they got the same colors that are in the glitter paste that are on this panel. So I'm just going to add a few here and there just to give it some sparkle and to tie in the sentiment with the card. So, like I said, I changed my mind about the sentiment. That's why we're cutting clip. I was like, uh, it's, just a, it's a, just a note. So a note card should be blank. So I'm just going to stick a white panel in there. So you can do this also, especially with black. Now, we did a lot of elegant cards. Let's do some fun, whimsical cards. Now, these little gnomes are from Your Next. And they're called Your Next Cute Gnomies. And I haven't been able to find this kit again. I think they just retired it. But it's so cute. If you can find it anywhere, get it. It's adorable. The gnomes are adorable. And the sentiments are really fun and cute. Now I'm taking the panel with the little two color ombre triangles and I'm putting a little circular vellum in the center. And I'm going to line these little flowers on here, kind of off center. And I'm going to adhere them underneath. And I'm not putting craft foam underneath it because I'm going to use the craft foam to put these gnomes up in front. So I'm going to put some of my scotch foam squares on the back of these little gnomes and pop them up. So I have the gnome with a little wheelbarrow and the gnome with the little, on the little mushroom. And I'm going to pop those guys up. And I colored these guys with my Arteza brush pens. I have fallen in love with these and I keep on going to them as I color. In fact, I think I've been using it more than my Copics because I just love the fluidity of it. So I'm also going to put on this little tiny snail, but first let me get my sentiment in. And here's the cat right there. I'll try to find it and put a link up for it if I can find it anywhere. And I chose the little sentiment that came in there. I, it is, I'm doing this in the cottage, Ivy. You're awesome and you know it. <laughs> like I said, they're really cute. And there's one that says, sup, know me. <laughs> it's just, it's really fun and cute. So if you have people that like gnomes, this is a perfect little gnome sentiment card. And I like it because I had other sets that were really cutesy. But this one, it was still kind of fun, whimsical, but yet not super cutesy. So it was really fun. So I'm going to put some of these bees on there, the snail on that panel. 
and I'm trying to line up these bees so they're not too much. Now I'm going to prep my panel to put on top of my card form that I just put my sentiment in. And I'm going to stick this right on top. Now, these little gnomes are just so much fun. So I'm going to, oops, I lost part of my square. Let me get that back on there. So they're going to be popping right up on there. And I like putting the bell on there because it made it a little less busy for where I had all the figures. Now I'm going to get that little mushroom one. And I decided that B was right where I wanted to put the gnome. So we're going to just remove that B quickly and stick it on later. There we go. So let me clean up my mess a little bit. And I'm now going to take some white cardstock. And I'm going to print the next little sentiment also in the green. And I just chose the thanks that came with the kit. Now I didn't find out I had to push the little exclamation point a few times because sometimes a little dot got missed. No biggie. So we're going to cut this down at a slash. And I'm going to add some foam adhesive squares on the back of this sentiment. I like this little thing. You actually almost make this a little masculine too, which is kind of cool. It's hard. Like I said in one other video, it's hard to make masculine cards because a lot of the things we stamp are really pretty, really beautiful, you know, very fun and cutesy, and it's just not masculine. But this one actually could go either way, depending on how you color it. And here I am, I'm bringing in those red Aurora Borealis Sunflower Rhinestones as well as the yellow. And I'm just adding a couple, just to add some dimension to that. Now here comes some more of those Nomies. And this time I'm using that zigzag kind of rainbow pattern. And I'm going to put it sideways. So I'm going to start by prepping it by putting my craft foam on the back of this card. I'm going to make sure it kind of warped a little bit, so I'm going to make sure I got a lot on there just to straighten it out. And now I was going to put it in the center, but I decided to go kitty corner. And there's another one painted, colored a little differently with reds and blues instead of the greens and blues in the other one. And I was going to use a bee, but I decided not to, so I got the snail and the butterfly. So this one, I'm going to pop up the vellum a little more and just leave the gnomes one-dimensional. I wanted the two-dimension before because I wanted the flowers to be behind them. But this one, I don't need that. So I'm just going to hear these. And I did actually find that I had a little dragonfly also cut out. And for this one, I am choosing the same sentiment inside as I did the other one. And this time I'm doing it in, I believe it's the Dombe Blue. And you're awesome and you know it. And like I said, I have to go over there a couple times and push down on that exclamation point. Just so that dot comes up clear. Now let that dry and I'm going to pop this up with some foam squares. behind some of the figures. And like I always tell you, trick it vellum, hide your adhesive as much as you can. In this case I'm putting all the squares behind the figures. I'll put plenty of adhesive to hold that panel down. Put 
pull off all these backs. Now I'm going to adhere it to the card front. Isn't that cute? Now for the sentiment, I'm going to take some more white cards up. I have to use my scraps that I have left over from cutting card forms. And this one, I'm going to choose this fun sentiment. The one that made this so much fun. Sup, Nomi for this card, and I'm just doing it in the same matching Dombe Blue that was inside the card. And I'm going to pop these up also with foam adhesive squares. I'm trying to find the right combination to get that angle. Sometimes you just gotta kind of almost puzzle piece it. Good enough. And here's another card that can almost go either way, too. can go either feminine or masculine. So I'm going to add a few of the red, and then I'm also going to add some of the yellow. Spread them out a little bit. I decided to put one more down. Or a couple more down. Uh, one more down is good. Alright, and there's that card. Isn't that fun? Alright, now for the fun, last fun card we're going to make. See, I started with the elegant. We're going into the fun. Is another kit. This one is from Waffle Flower. This is the... Possum. I can't remember what it was called. I'll add a link to it down below. But this one's by Wa Waffle Flower. And I'm going to start by putting my sentiment in. And you'll see I edit this later. Um, but I'm doing this in the bamboo leaves. And it's the word possum. And I had colored and cut a bunch of the little birthday puppy figures. And I also cut out a piece of circular vellum again. Oops, I got my acetate in the way. Let's get that out of the way. Now, I played around with this for a couple minutes. That's why we skipped into it. Because I took way too long trying to figure out how I was going to lay this out. And that's something you just don't really need to be watching. So I'm going to cut into me gluing them back on now. And I'm using these little banner parts to make the pennants. And I'm also adding some little balloons. Oops, I changed my mind. I don't want the balloon there. I want the balloon here. Because I didn't want two of the blue together. That way the colors are a little bit separated. And this one I'm also going to be doing it in two dimensions. So the puppy's going to... The black and white dog's going to be in the middle. But I'm putting the presents... And the bones behind him. So I'm going to start by laying out the presents. Oops, that one's a little crooked. And I'm using the little dachshunds next. And this is a layout. Make sure everything fits. And there's I'm putting the bones in front of the presents. Because what dog doesn't want? Bones with his presents. So next I'm going to put the little party hats that came with the kit on top of the dachshunds. I did cut out the little white part on the bottom so that the die cut marks didn't show. Because it wants to, I want it to look like they're wearing the hats, not like it was die cut. So now I'm going to put some foam squares behind the white and black dog. I don't know if he's a bull terrier, what, he, what kind of dog he is, but he's 
he was kind of the only singular dog, and the kit, everything else had pairs. I'll have a link to this kit down below, too. I'm also doing the same kind of dimensionalness to the two dachshunds. It's fun how you can make a scene with stamps by just adding some dimension. Popping up some, leaving some non-popped up. And it makes the pictures almost 3D. All right. Put one more piece there and remove that. Add this little dox in there. We also have birthday cakes and cupcakes that we got to add to. I was going to add cake slices, but it became too much. So I decided just to do the cupcakes and the big cake in the center. Oh, and I had misplaced one of it. It was hiding underneath, so let's get that in there. Now that looks like the perfect little birthday party scene. And I was going to do a center, but I decided to do it a little upward. So now I'm just going to do some adhesive tape runner on the back of this because I don't want to add any more dimension to the card. I want it to be flat against the panel. And there we go. And I love how the vellum kind of mutes the background so that the picture pops up. That's why I ended up adding those behind there because I wanted the panel to be there but also mute it a little bit. Now I was going to put this in the front but I decided I kind of wanted to put it in side. So I'm going to stamp this on top. I'm just going to take out my foam and put it in it. Down. And I'm just putting it on top of it. Hope your birthday was possum. And isn't that cute? And I'm not doing any embellishments. I'm keeping it simple. Isn't that cute? So I hope you liked these videos. So if you did, please click down below and see the last uploaded video, as well as check this one, which is curated specially just for you. Now, if you like our videos and you want to keep on seeing them, please click this link. It'll bring you to our channel where you can like, subscribe, or hit the notification bell to keep up to date on all the current videos.